you because you you can move your hands in the paper you can fold it different ways in and that and that exercise me in I feel great like that it's fun Marco Tulio all right that's great that's uh, that's true. When you build paper airplanes, it's really easy to experiment uh, and, and make them fly different ways. That's exactly what we're going to do today. Anyone else like to share their experience with flying machines, either real flying machines or model, model airplanes? Um, my name is Camila and I live here in Tegucigalpa. Hi, Camila. Uh, when I built um, my paper airplane, uh, it's really fun because I I can just create it like in how I want it, and then you can just like create the own shape of the paper airplane. Sweet, sweet. Okay, good deal. So, uh, can someone, since Brent and I, or at least I don't know much about Honduras. Can one of you tell us your favorite things about your country? Your, your all-time favorite things about Honduras that you'd like to share with us. What's your name? Mirko. Mirko. Mirko, okay, Mirko. Nice to meet you. What's cool about Honduras? Um, you can ride like bikes all over the, the, the streets and like, like up mountains because there's like flat platforms so not, not like rocky platforms so you can ride wheels and like, like you can experiment stuff. Okay, so Honduras is very very bicycle friendly. Okay, cool. How about the food in Honduras? I was thinking the same thing, John. <laughs> Delicious. Delicious. Who wants Delicious. to tell about the food? Sarah, come. Brent and I are very interested in food. If you're a good cook, <laughs> we'll hire you. My name is Sarah. I'm sorry, you say again your name? My name is Sara. Sara, all right, Sara, welcome. Nice to meet you. About the food. In Paris, we have baleadas, baleadas and catrachas, chilenas, semitas. Wow, sounds <laughs> delicious. <laughs> well, I have one problem. Um, I'm not familiar enough with these foods. Can you mail us some? <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell him, Adriana, come and tell him, describe the baleadas for them. What are the baleadas? The, ba the baleadas are like tortillas, flour tortillas with um, fried beans inside and Ooh. we put like some cheese and... Um, <laughs> You can put some avocado on them, eggs, Ooh. and then just fold them, and then you're just ready to eat. Ooh, whoa, making me hungry. <laughs> Sounds good. How about uh, your music and your, and how do they dance in Honduras? Can someone, can someone tell us how, how you dance in Honduras? We use tropical grasses, um, and, and the boys too use like something, uh, a hat and uh -huh. a bow tie. And a bow tie, a hat and a bow tie, that sounds very, <laughs> very elegant. And, and how does it look? How do, when you dance, how do you dance? Um, show, show us. Do it, do it like this. Look, wrap the dress like this. Uh -huh. All right, there's a dance. <laughs> you got it. You'd be very popular in the United States if you danced like that. 
Okay. Well, now that we get to know each other a little bit, um, what if Brent will, I'll share my screen, or Brent, do you want to share your screen? Uh, sure. Okay. And we'll fire up. Uh, this is a PowerPoint presentation. How many of you have done PowerPoint before? Wow. Wow. All right. Okay. Okay, so at Build It Yourself, we like to build projects while thinking about a problem and a mission. Because like everything in life, we're trying to solve problems and make the world better. So with our Fly Machines project, we have a problem. It takes way too long to get to school. We have a lot of wasted time, and it's really hard to travel anywhere, especially fun, exotic places. Um, do any of you have a long ride to school, like 10 minutes, 20 minutes? One yes. hour. One hour. One hour. Wow. Ten hours. <laughs> 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 we like that. So imagine if you could take those hours and get them back. Imagine if you had to drive an hour to school, to and from school. That's two hours a day. Is there anything you would rather be doing, like playing video games or sleeping? Okay. <laughs> so you guys definitely can appreciate that it takes too long to get to school. So our mission, <laughs> we need to build flying machines that can get us from point A to point B really fast. Our goal is to get to school in less than one minute. If we can get... <laughs> nice. So... Imagine if you could get to school and home from school in just two minutes. That's an hour and 58 minutes of your life back for video games, to play with your bunny, all that kind of stuff. Wouldn't that be awesome? Yes, video games. Bunny. Video games. Video games. Hey, John, should I cue up the video? Um, sure, sure. Okay. Okay. So... Flying machines, there's a long history. Actually, let's, let's go to the next slide first before we queue up the video. Okay. So who knows, guys, the story of Daedalus and Icarus? Does anyone know who Daedalus and Icarus were? No. Uh, Lula, can you... Do you, do you like to share who Daedalus and Icarus was, were? Yes. <laughs> 
Excellent, Lula. A history of one of the first uh, re recorded stories of man trying to fly like a bird. So, uh, Brenda is going to show you a video now of kind of the history of the development of flying machines. So this is maybe about 100 years ago. Whoop, rocket on the rocket pack on the back. Didn't do so well. <laughs> Here's another rocket man from I think this is a rocket a rocket man in Japan. So he's going to fly into the ocean. So they want to make sure that when he lands, he has a safety raft. Two, one, blast off. <laughs> no. oh my God. Oh. OK, so that's an example of how not to fly. Now you're going to see the ultimate skateboard. <laughs> hi, Elena. <laughs> oh, hi, John. I wasn't sure you could see me. This is oh, the yeah. first time I, I go in by myself without Lula. So it's oh, a it's Elena. Hi, Elena. Hi. So this is the ultimate skateboard. Imagine going to school in a machine like this. Instead of one hour, you get to school in one minute. So these are real machines. These machines actually exist. So pretty soon you guys are going to be you're going to be able to buy a flying machine like this. And instead of traveling in a car, you'll be able to fly wherever you want to go. So this is a combination car airplane. Look at that! Look at that! <laughs> That's great. No, it's a car and an airplane. Amazing! Yes. All right. Fantastic. So that's a little a short story of a man's attempt <clears throat> to fly like a bird. So in order to understand the principles of flying machines, <clears throat> how to design a flying machine that works really well, we're going to start with paper airplanes. So uh, Brent, can you show the video on um, world championship uh, airplanes? So they have a contest. Uh, this contest, I think, uh, was done in Europe. And it's a, it's a, a championship for paper airplanes, the world championship for paper airplanes. Can you, can you make it bigger? Oh, uh, yeah, that. Look, look. Oh, well, 
from these are people from all over the world that come to this conference to show off their paper airplane design skills. It's super important. So the video is a little hard to follow here, uh, but you get the general idea. That's the record holder. That I can try and shrink it. It might help with um, bandwidth. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> That's the airplane we're going to build. Yes. It's the record holder. Right now? Yeah, right now. We're going to build it. And we're All right. OK, so we have our problem and our mission. Someone like to explain the problem before we start building? OK, who wants to explain the problem? Did you understand? When What's our problem? What's our problem? Who can tell us? Right. And if that's the problem, what's the mission? What is the mission? To get more to the school? To? All right. You got it. Okay. So that's a good place to start. A, a good engineer always starts with a clear definition of the problem and the mission. All right, so um, Brent, can you set up the uh, X101 paper airplane instructions? Yes. And then um, Lula, if you can hand out paper, let's, um, we can hand out a piece of paper to everyone. We're gonna start building uh, your own paper airplane design. Now, before it, let me just, uh, let me, um, let me uh, introduce this project with um, the first time you build something, and particularly a paper airplane, it will almost never work really well. So, when you're building these paper airplanes, you have to go through a lot of trial and error process, trial and error step in order to get your plane to fly well. So once we start building it, we're going to stop and, and talk about what you can do to your airplane to make it fly better. But let's get the basic plane built first, and then we'll show you how we can make that what the physics of flight are and what you have to do to make your plane really fly as well as it can fly. Okay, first step. Listen, listen. Okay. So the first thing you need to do, um, let's explain what hot dog fold and hamburger fold is. So Hold your paper, not horizontally, but you want to hold it, yes, as you see John doing. So this is the wrong way. The long way, you don't want to do this. You want to hold it the hamburger way. Now, when you're designing paper airplanes, it's really important to make your folds as clean as possible. So make, uh, make each fold really straight and crisp. You can do that by rubbing your fingernails against the fold many times. Okay? It's just like doing our origami. In order for your models to work well, you have to fold really carefully. Very good. Yes. John, they're showing to you in, at the camera. I see that. All right. We got it. Good step. OK, next step, Brent. OK, so the next step, <clears throat> you want to take the corners 
and fold them, the top two corners, and fold them into the fold you just made. So you see how John has taken the corner and he's folding it downwards. And he's bringing this point to here. Do your best to get the points to line up to make a flat line here because the more symmetrical your plane is, the better it will fly. Your plane will fly crooked if you're not, if it's not symmetrical. Does anyone know what symmetrical means? No. Who can explain? Who wants to take a guess at what symmetrical means? John is asking, who can explain what is symmetrical? Symmetric is uh, an object that, that um, is the same, both sides are the same. Wow, excellent. What's your name? Fernando. Fernando, that's brilliant. That's exactly right. Explain just right. The right side has to equal the left side to be symmetric. Okay. Who can look at this picture and say what the next step is? What do you think the next step is? Oh, okay. Oh, sorry. Okay, you got it. You got it, Brent. I thought you were asking them to explain this one. Okay. Um. Oh, you got it. You're, oh, let's see. Whoa, hold it up again to the camera. Very good. Perfect. Perfect. Okay. So far, so good. And remember to try and make it symmetrical. So the point should line up with the first fold you made that crease. Has anyone here ever had a really heavy book bag? Have you ever tried to hold it on only one shoulder? Yeah. You ever feel like you want to walk in that direction? Yeah. Same thing with your paper airplane. If one side has more paper on it because it's folded uneven, the paper airplane might want to go in the wrong direction. Okay, good example, Brent. Okay, the next step, guys, is we want to make the front end of your wing uh, a little stronger. So we're going to fold the edges of the front end of your wing. So it's like this. Okay, you can see it in the blue paper, uh, blue instructions on the left. You'll see it in my, on my video screen shortly. This one is a little more complicated. So when you fold this edge over, make sure that when you fold it, this edge right here, you'll see it goes straight up and down, and this edge goes straight across. So you don't want to fold it where you have something uneven, like where it comes over, and then it's, you know, try and get it to And try to make both sides the same width. Don't accidentally fold it a lot thicker than the other side. Those are two things to be careful for. Okay, so far so good. Yes. You have nice triangles there. Wow, how old are you? Eight. Eight years old, all right, good for you. How is it that you guys speak such good English? I don't know. <laughs> you speak really perfect English. Wow. Hello. 
I, I'm impressed too. Oops, sorry. Okay, doing good. We have just a few more steps. Okay. So the next step is we're going to make what we what's called in our, on an airplane the fuselage. The fuselage is where all the passengers sit. It's the main body of the plane. And we're going to make that fuselage by just folding over the wings. Can you do it again for us, please? Yep. So here's we had it like that? Yeah. One side. We have to do both sides. I like this. Yes. So all the pieces you folded already, just close your plane on the original crease so all the folds are on the inside. And once you have it folded in half, all you have to do is bend back the wings. You're basically making it so you have something to hold when you throw it. Wow, you're quick. You're good at this. Uh, it won't fly yet. Let's let's wait. Before we throw them, let's uh, we're going to talk about what it takes to make your plane really fly well. It should look kind of like this now. The flies underneath, the folds on top. Okay, so we have one more fold to make and then we're gonna stop and show you some videos. So, when you, when you study airplanes, you'll notice that there's usually vertical elements on the plane. And those vertical elements are called fins. And they help keep your plane go, to go straight. They help steer your plane. So we're gonna make fins for our plane by folding over the end of the wing. So you have a fold like this, right? The end of the wing should have a fin on it. And that fin will help keep your airplane straight. So if you look at the blue diagrams, you'll see, you'll see all the lines, all the triangles that you have to be, that you can use to make your plane symmetrical. Like this? Um, yep, that's good. You got it. Wow, you guys are quick. Like this? You guys are very quick. So far, so good. Like this. Uh, see. All right. Okay, so you can look at your classmates because many of you have it just right. All right, before you throw them, guys, can you all come up to the screen and we're going to show you... Uh, we're going to show you some slides and a video. Okay. So, um, Brent, can you go to the uh, flying machines web, uh, flying machines homepage, the yes. project page, flying, and let's show the video of uh, Julian uh, flying his paper airplane. So, scroll up. I got that. You got it. Okay, good. Okay, guys. So you have to watch this. Okay. So this is a. Wow. MIT engineer. Look at that. Look at that. Whoa, what happened? That's, yeah. That's, That's a, problem. a problem. That's definitely a problem. Okay. <laughs> okay, now look at him. He's going to try again. So he's talking about being patient and trying again and again and again until he gets it just right. Look at what he's done. He's added a pilot for customization, and he's added paper clips and a nose to control the center of gravity. Now watch the plane. Oh, 
really beautiful just because we added paper clips. Look at that. All right. <laughs> okay. So let's let's uh, show a couple of slides that demonstrate the center of gravity before you add paper clips to your paper airplane. Okay, this is important. Very important. So if you uh, go back to our main PowerPoint, Brent. We'll oh, can you see it? Uh, this is not the uh, not the folded one. Oh, I see. I see. Yes, I got that. Thank you. Okay. Oh. So if you scroll down to center, right, right there, great. Look at that, very important, look okay, at that. Okay, so who can come up to the screen and read this slide? Who can read it? Diana, go ahead. This First one. Yes. Out loud. The physics of light, center of gravity. The center of gravity will determine if your plane will dive, stall, or glide straight. Excellent. Okay, who can, that's excellent. What's your name? Ariana. Ariana, nicely, ni nicely read, Ariana. Who can read, who can read the three, uh, the three conditions for the center of gravity? What's the first one? So if you're in an airplane and all the passengers and all the baggage are in the front of the plane, what do you think is going to happen? It's going to die. It's going to die, right. Like you read the second condition. Like this. Stall paper clip too far to the rear. So if all the passengers and all the baggage, the suitcases, or in the rear of the plane, uh, your plane will stall. And that's a really nasty situation for a pilot, because if your plane stalls, you lose speed, and you'll almost surely crash. So you don't want your weight to be too far in the back. And what's the ideal condition? Glide, paper clip at the center of gravity. At the center of gravity. And the center of gravity, next slide, Brent. The center of gravity is where your plane balances. So generally, you want to put the paper clip such that when the when your paper when your airplane is resting on your finger, it will neither go like this or like this. It'll balance perfectly. You have to find a position to put your paper clips. So I generally found that you need a couple of paper clips in the front. And sometimes you can even put the paper clips on the uh, two wings. You can put them on the fuselage, or you can even put them on the two wings like this. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put three paper clips on here, one on the fuselage, two on the wings. Can you see that? Paper clips on the front ends of the wings, and then you can put a paper clip along the fuselage. And now you can go and experiment, Here. test fly your planes, and each time you fly it, adjust the paper clip until the plane flies straight. It neither goes like this or it goes like this. It should fly straight across if you get the paper clip on your fuselage adjusted just to the right point. It may take you 10 tries, 10, 10 test flights before you get it right, or even more. But don't give up. Don't give up, guys. Try and try again until you get it straight. Okay. Thanks, Brent. You're welcome. Okay, so shall we um, get in a line and let's test, let's test one at a time. And we'll try to critique each other's plane. Stand in a line and we'll test one at a time and then, and then you can do many tests. But let's, let's see if we can critique our 
our teammates design and tell them whether they need to put paper clips in the front or in the back. Okay, now is the time to test your plane and adjust. Test and adjust. Test and adjust. Test and edit. Okay, let's, let's see how your airplanes look at themselves. Fly your airplanes in front of John's camera so that he can see what you're doing. Okay, John, there they are. Great, thank you, Lula. You shouldn't have to throw it too hard. You should, oh, I see some of them are gliding really well. You don't need to throw it hard. Just let it release. And if it releases. All right. Looking good, guys. Oh, nice. That one flies really well. Look at this. The clips are All right. Okay, look. Perfect. Nice design. <laughs> now, if you guys want uh, to experiment with your planes even more, if, in the next class, if you want to continue what you've done or at home, you could uh, make a pilot for your plane. So if you look at uh, the video here. Okay, John, we, we can uh, start making a reflection of our learning today. Sure, go, go ahead, Lula. Why don't you direct the, the, the conclusion? No, John, you. Okay. All right. So we have just 10 more minutes. Shall we, shall we gather around the camera and talk about next steps? Yes, gather around the camera to talk about the next step. Very good. What would be the next step, Mr. Galileo? Okay. okay, so let's see if I can um, get our, um, get my video up here. Two options. So uh, I can't. Hold on a second. Brent, can uh, you, you want me to screen? stop sharing? Yeah, stop yeah, sharing yeah. your screen, please. Thanks, Brent. All right, I see nice, lots of colorful airplanes there. We're going to show you how you can make your airplanes look even more cool. So, that's the full screen. so you can see my video now. So what we can do to your airplanes is add a pilot. So you can draw a cartoon and you can make uh, an, a pilot for your plane and you can stick this cartoon right in your fuselage. Okay, you, well you can move it back and forward. You can move this pilot back and forward in the slot of the fuselage to help control your center of gravity. So you have to test it many times and then you can also put decorations on your plane. So you could make, uh, 
fire coming out the back of your plane? Here's a, a pilot. And here's um, on, the, on the fins are some lightning bolts. So you could get some colored, colored pencils and draw cartoon and decals and even rocket fire for your airplane to make it look even more cool. All right, so next uh, steps, guys. Try to make your airplanes look cool by decorating them. Add a pilot and some decals. So before we adjourn, who likes to summarize? What's the problem? What's Why are we building air paper airplanes? Takes too long to get to school. So what's our mission? To build a flying machine that can take us in one minute. To take us to school in one minute. And what, where does, what's the center of gravity? What, what, what is important about the center of gravity in an airplane? Who likes to explain the consequences of the center of gravity? Okay, so three conditions for flying our center of gravity in the front, in the rear, and right in the middle, so the plane balances and goes straight, right? Okay, what's important about the left side and the right side of your plane? They are equal, they're symmetrical. Okay, so those are two critical elements in the design of a good plane. Center of gravity and symmetry. You'll learn more about flying machines if you, um, if you, if you join our workshops on, on other flying machines. We can show you a little bit. Uh, Brent, can you go to the um, main project page? Share your, or, yeah, great. So we're gonna show you a, a video in parting that shows you all of the flying machines we build. At the very top of the screen, there's a video. Yep, that one, mission introduction. Whoops. Oh, no, that's the wrong, okay. I haven't prepped yep. the Firefox for me. <laughs> okay, so here's all of our airplanes. She's one of our workshop leaders, Angelica Piedrahita from Colombia. She has a brainstorm hat also. And she made this video. So we make flying machines out of premium quality junk. She's talking about the problem. Man has always wanted to fly, but the problem with flying is that it takes a long, and, uh, and here we talk about the inventors of one of the first flying machines, Wilbur and Orville Wright, the Wright brothers. <clears throat> The problem with flying is that it's expensive, it takes a long time, and it's sometimes it pollutes the air. So our mission is to design the next generation of way cool looking flying machines that could get you your dream place in a blink of an eye. So here's some of the flying machines that you'll build in our flying machines project. This is a straw rocket. Here's a rubber band glider. And here's an air rocket. Ready, set, go. Okay. So there you have it. Uh, so I hope Brent and I hope to see you in more Build It Yourself workshops. Hope you'll join our, our, build it, our crew of builders. Have a nice rest of the day. Don't go, John. Don't go. Don't go. Um, we want to thank you for all your, for your time. Oh, you're most welcome.
Uh, the kids surely enjoy it. Did you enjoy it, guys? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, nice to have you. Yeah. All right. Well, it's a pleasure building with you. Thank you, friends, also for your time. Okay. You're welcome. We love it. Thank you. Great. Okay. Bye. Bye. Bye, everyone. Bye. Don't nice go. with you. Okay. Don't go, Jim. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Remember, you have to make a pilot for your airplane. Draw a pilot. Yes. All right. Okay. I want to introduce you to get to the Hi. She's, well, whether she tells you because I got the idea, but not so well. Oh, hold on one second until the noise in the background calms down a little bit. I'm sorry, your name is? Anna. Your name is Anna? Anaí Payeta. Payeta. Okay. <laughs> Okay. Uh, well, it's a little, a little noisy. So, sure. So, um, very nice to meet you. I'm the curriculum director at ASD. Great. Um, and uh, just uh, very lucky to have been invited to, to witness this wonderful lesson. Oh, well, it's our pleasure. We would love to work with you and students in Honduras. Yes. trying to accomplish at the school. We are, um, you know, in the beginning of a STEAM learning and um, authentic learning, problem-based learning. So this really just, um, I think, falls right in with what we're doing. And I commend you for this type of, um, of learning. It was uh, just so great to see the kids so engaged. Thank you. Thank you. Well, it's, it's our pleasure and, our, and, our, and we're the ones that are having just as much fun as the kids. <laughs> Um, may, I, may, may Brent and I know a little bit more about your school? It's called the American School? The American School of Tegucigalpa. Okay. Uh, we're a private K-12 school based in, uh, in Tegucigalpa, in, uh, and we have about um, 1,100 students. Wow. Nursery to grade 12. So wow. Preschool, elementary, middle, and high. All on the same campus? All on the same campus. Very nice. Wow. Okay. Um, it sounds it sounds spectacular. Um, I was really impressed at how well your kids speak English. Uh, I assume they start when they're really young. Yes, at three years old, uh, start very early, and our, our yes, our, our English. Um, you know, our students get a lot of compliments on their English, um, and so uh, they they're very excited to. Uh, I think to have this type of learning with, uh, you know, it was uh, live. So okay. very different from just, you know, watching video. Uh, mm -hmm. The steps as a being able to interact with, uh, with you. And um, I forgot your name. John. John and Brent. Okay. Brent. Hi, Brent. Uh, <laughs> um, so um, I don't want to take more of your time, but I just wanted to say hi. And uh, I was telling about the possibility of maybe uh, connecting again um, and uh, talking about a possible uh, partnership with your organization. Sure. Um, well, you know, uh, the best is to collaborate with Lula, and Lula is uh, um, a really, really important part of our team. And um, uh, anything that Lula is good with, Lula is good with us. <laughs> Let's say goodbye because I know she's she's ready to get going. Okay. Yeah. Great. Bye. Thank you. Uh, just wait, John. They want a photograph, so we're gonna stand by the screen over here. Thanks for all the time that you've given 
that you gave to them. You're right? welcome. Our Thank pleasure. You. We enjoy it. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you. Nice working with you. So see you, John, next week. We are okay, Lula. Cool. Monday. See you in, in Jalapa. Ramon, maybe it's there. Okay. The yep. Hi, Ramon. Um, nice to meet you. Hope to see you again soon. Bye, Brent. See you next week. Bye. <laughs> Okay. Thanks, Brent. You're welcome. All good. Have a good rest of the day. We'll talk later. Yeah. yeah. See you tonight. Okay. Great. Uh,